Brightspace Assignments, a Brightspace tip brought to you by the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Office of Instructional Technology. All assignments begin under the Content tab when you're in a course, so I'm going to start a Brightspace assignment by selecting Content. The next step is to create the unit or locate the unit that you want to put your content into. If you don't currently have a unit, you can click here on New Unit to create one. If you are putting this in an existing unit, you would simply locate the unit that you want your new assignment to be in and select it. Then you're going to move to the right hand side of the screen and choose the gray button that says Create New. And then you're looking for the option here that says Assignment. That will give you a Brightspace assignment. At the top, we type in the title for our assignment. We have an option here to leave it as ungraded or select and type in a point value for this assignment. Then we can choose whether or not we want this to be included in the gradebook or not. Select here where it says due date to open the calendar and choose the date that you want students to turn it in by. You can even go to the level of choosing the specific time. So if you want it submitted before they come to class, you could fill in the time that your class starts. Underneath, we have the area here for instructions, which allows some rich text features such as bold and italics and even options to include links and pictures and so on. Now we move to the field at the bottom in order to choose any attachments that we want to give the students. Starting with our icon on the left here, this would allow us to upload a file that is currently saved on our computer or a USB drive, access to our Google Drive, and even access to our OneDrive. So for example, maybe I want to give my students a Google Drive file. I can select right here. It's going to open my drive so that I can search and locate the material that I would like to give to my students. Please notice that here in the materials window, it says it's going to change the permissions to anyone with the link can view. So this is not going to be an editable file for my students. It's simply some sort of reference material that they need in order to complete the assignment. For example, my directions say that it is an article that they are supposed to read, and then they are going to record a video in order to turn this into me. So here we have filled out everything in the field on the left-hand side of our screen to attach our document, include our instructions, due date, points, and the title of the assignment. Now let's turn our attention to the right-hand side of the screen and take a look at some of the additional options that we have. Starting at the top, we have the field known as Availability Dates and Conditions. When we click this arrow, we can see that we can choose a date for this assignment to become available and even a date for it to be removed from the list that students have. We can add release conditions to it, and we can even set up special access, which would allow this assignment to be available only to select groups or individuals within the class. This is great for your differentiated assignments, any students in quarantine, or if this is some kind of makeup work that is only going to a handful of students that missed the original assignment. Let's collapse this and take a look at the next option. We have submission and completion as our next field. Once again, we click our arrow and you can see that by default, every single Brightspace assignment is listed to file submission. This means the students will not be able to turn the assignment into you unless they attach a file to it. If you're not asking them to create anything and attach a file to it, you're going to want to change the submission type so that they will be successful in turning it in. Let's take a look at the other submission types. Our second option is a text submission. In this option, what the students will see is in addition to the name of the assignment, the due date, the instructions, and the attachments, they have a box to type in text for you. If this assignment said read the article and then type in one to two sentences to tell me what you learned from it, they could do that directly in that text box. Once again, I don't need them to turn in a file to me. I just need them to type in the box. This text submission type requires that they type something in the text box in order to turn it into me, but they don't have to do anything else like submitting a file. 
Our third assignment type is called on paper submission. This assignment type implies that I give them the assignment in the digital platform, but that they turn in something to me on paper. So Brightspace does not expect that they will actually turn in anything through this platform. Our final assignment type is observed in person. The observed in person, much like the on paper, assumes that I'm going to give them the assignment here in the digital platform, but in order to score them, I'm going to watch them perform or complete some sort of task in person. Both the on paper and observed in person will allow students to turn in or mark a Brightspace assignment as done without requiring that they type anything or attach anything. So these work great if you're giving students something like a Google form where they don't actually have to attach another file. They simply need to notify you when they're done with the form. So on paper, observed in person work great for things like Google Forms. Let's say we're going to choose that on paper submission for this assignment. Now we have another field to consider, and that is how the assignment gets marked as completed. By default, it will automatically marked as completed on the due date. We also have the option to change it to manually by learners. This allows the student themselves to notify you when they're done. This is great for assignments that will extend over a few days because you'll want to know if some students finished it on Monday, some finished it on Tuesday, and so on so that you can jump in and start scoring it and giving them their feedback. So we highly recommend when you choose on paper submission or in-person observation that you choose the manually by learner so that they can notify you when they are finished. Let's collapse that and turn our attention to our final option here, evaluation and feedback. This is your opportunity to use Brightspace's rubric builder to add a rubric to this assignment so that students will know exactly what criteria they're being scored on. And it also allows you to add any learning objectives that you want to make sure that they fulfill as a part of this assignment. Once you have all of your information and all of your settings adjusted here on the right hand side, you are ready to click save and close so that this assignment is created. One last thing to point out about assignments, as you create assignments here, you'll notice the icon with the eyeball and the slash through it. This indicates that this assignment is currently hidden from students. All of your units and assignments will by default be hidden until you click to unhide them. The great thing about this is it allows you to actively be building something and the students don't have to see it under construction. So if the students are currently working on Unit 4, you can be loading in resources for Unit 5, but it doesn't overwhelm them or confuse them because they're not sure if they're supposed to be starting on those things yet. So hidden is a very simple way for you to be adding things that the students don't see yet. When you're ready to make this viewable to students, you would simply click on the unit or the individual assignment and click the slider here to make it visible. Exactly the same for both the units and any assignments within. Please note that if the unit itself is hidden from students, everything within that unit is also hidden from students, even though this particular assignment is marked as unhidden. In order for them to see it, they would have to be able to see all of unit four.